Welcome back to PSC's Tech Byte. This week I want to talk with you about a really interesting and powerful scenario that you can create leveraging Azure Active Directory and open authorization. Let's assume that you have an application registered in Azure Active Directory. We most likely know that we can register such kind of application as a multi-tenant application, which means that an application registered in one tenant can be then leveraged by multiple users in multiple tenants. And what if that application is an API app that you want to provide to third parties? And what if those third parties are other multi-tenant applications registered in other tenants? So, like for example, it happens whenever you create your own multi-tenant applications and you consume SharePoint Online or Exchange Online, which are first-party APIs registered by Microsoft and made available as multi-tenant APIs to all of the tenants uh, which have Office 365 enabled. So, let's have a look at an architectural diagram to better understand the overall solution. Here we have a tenancy in which we have a user who wants to leverage a client application uh, defining a tenant B as a multi-tenant uh, application, which will consume uh, an API app, uh, which is registered yet in another tenant called tenant B as a multi-tenant uh, application. And the API app uh, will consume uh, content from the SharePoint Online tenant uh, for the user in tenancy on behalf of that user and will provide the resulting data to the client application, which will provide the overall result to the user. So, First of all, the user will have uh, to uh, run the application, the consumer application defined in tenant B. And by doing that, uh, he will have uh, to authenticate uh, using Azure Active Directory and to grant uh, the permissions to run that application in his own tenant, so in tenant C. And because the uh, application, uh, the client application defined in tenant B and registered in tenant C, will get the access token of the user, will be able to provide uh, uh, that access token also to the API app running in tenant A, as long as that application will be registered in tenant C as well, being a multi-tenant application, and leveraging the on behalf functionality of uh, uh, open authorization in Azure Active Directory, the API app uh, created in tenant A and registered in tenant C will be able to get an access token on behalf of the current users in order to being able to consume the SharePoint Online tenant of tenant C on behalf of the user. And in order to get back some data from SharePoint, uh, which will be provided back to the client application, which will give the overall response to the user run in tenancy and that's the scenario that I want to explain you let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can create such kind of scenario so here we are in the Azure AD management portal and we are in what was called tenant A in our uh, diagram so in this tenant under the app registration I have a middle tier service registered which is with this specific application client ID, which we will see later on again. This is exposed as an API with a specific application ID URI and with a permission scope, which is middle tier dot consumer, which will be the permission that any consumer of this middle tier API will have to be granted in order to consume with the delegated access token, my target API. Moreover, if we go to authentication, we can see that this API is configured to allow accounts in any organizational directory, so it is a multi-tenant application. And in the manifest, I have the known client application sections in which I have a couple of applications configured to be consumer of this API. So if I want to use this API from a client application, the one defined in tenant B, let's switch to the tenant B in our sample, which is this one. And if I go to app registration, we can see we have a non behalf consumer application. This application has exactly the application ID which was configured in the known uh, application clients in the manifest of the API app and it will be configured uh, to consume my target API. Moreover, it is still configured as a multi-tenant uh, application, as you can see. So first of all, I need to consent uh, 
the registration and the permissions to the API app in tenant B. So using the admin consent URL, so login microsoftonline.com slash common because we are talking about a multi-tenant solution slash admin consent, I provide the client ID of my middle tier API and the redirect URL of microsoft.com just for the sake of simplicity. So by registering this application in tenant B and granting the permissions to access the site collection and to sign in and read the user profile to the middle tier service, I will enable tenant B to have access to the uh, API app. Let me accept the permission request. And in a matter of few seconds from now, if I will go into the enterprise applications registered in my tenant, uh, I will be able to see that the middle tier application is available. Usually it takes few seconds to make the application available, so it is not yet there, but in a matter of few seconds it will come out. So let me uh, wait for a bit and let me try again to search for the enterprise application after a few seconds. Usually, as I said, it takes few seconds to do the registration and in fact now the application is registered. And if I go there, I can see this is my application with the specific permissions that I uh, granted it. So I'll go back to my consumer app registration and the on behalf consumer application, I can say that from an API permission perspective, I want to add the permission for my consumer application to consume the API. So I will go to API that my organization uses. I will search for middle tier service and here it is. And I will grant the middle tier dot consumer permission to my uh, consumer application. Of course, I will have to do the admin grant for this permission granting. And now my multi-tenant on behalf consumer application is allowed to consume the uh, multi-tenant API app defined in the other tenant and registered in this tenant as well. So now, from a end user perspective, here is our tenant C, in which we will uh, be uh, able to use the consumer application and the API app in the backend. However, to do that, we have to register the API application in this tenant as well. So let me open another tab and let me go again to loginmicsotonline.com, common admin concept, and the same client ID of the API app as before. And Let's do again the registration in tenant C so that my API app will be defined, will be registered in the tenant C as well. Again, I will grant the permissions to that application. And now, and one more time, in a matter of few seconds, I will be able to see my application registered in the enterprise applications. Let me try now or in a matter of few seconds from now, and I will be able to see that my applications is defined uh, as an enterprise application in my tenancy and here it is so now i'm ready to use a client application which is this one in which uh, in a console application for example so an active application i'm using msal so microsoft authentication library and the public client application builder to create an iPublic public client application instance and to get an access token to consume my target multi-tenant consumer application, which under the cover will need to have a permission scope to reach my middle tier consumer backend API. So let's start this application. And on the other side, there will be a, a, an API, a, a MVC a API controller, which will provide the implementation of my uh, middle tier service. In that one, I will get the access token of the currently connected user in tenancy, and I will be able to use the home behalf of functionality that we covered, already covered a couple of weeks ago, to get an access token to consume SharePoint Online in tenancy, in the tenant of my user, and to get the user back from SharePoint Online, just to show you, just to give you the proof that I'm accessing the uh, SharePoint Online of the customer's tenant. So let me start this solution and it will be, as I said, a console application. I will have, uh, first of all, to authenticate uh, uh, using MSAL and targeting Azure Active Directory. So let me start the application and let me authenticate using uh, an account in tenancy, an account of an end user in tenancy. I will provide my password, of course, and by authenticated, authenticating, I will be able to grant uh, the permissions to the consumer app from tenancy perspective. 
And as you can see, the permission will be the permissions declared by the consumer application plus the permission to consume the middle tier service, of course. I can grant uh, on behalf of my organization the permissions to all of the users at tenant level and I can accept the request. So by doing that, I will get back an access token. I can proceed with my request uh, and I can set a breakpoint right here so that we can see what is the content of the access token and eventually we can play with Jot io to show you what's inside of the access token so let me open jot.io and let me show you that the access token that i have got through msal and to azure Act directory is an access token which has an audience for the middle tier service and this is for the currently connected user as you see and the user is the user in tenant c and this is the permission scope that i have to consume the target audience so exactly what i was looking for so back to my application, let me uh, continue on it and I will consume my target API providing the URL of the uh, tenant of the SharePoint Online tenant that I want to target. On the other side, here is my API. I can get the settings for my uh, REST API. I can see that the currently connected user is coming from the current principal right here. And I can proceed here and I can get a non behalf access token, which will allow me to consume the target API in SharePoint Online so that I will get back from SharePoint Online as the response, the JSON response for SharePoint Online, uh, the user that is running my uh, in my SharePoint Online tenant. And as you can see, sorry for the size of the font, but here we have a request that uh, gave back to us the user ID from a SharePoint Online perspective of the user which connected through the uh, client application. So in the middle we had our middle tier solution which uh, is running as a multi-tenant API and I can, get, I can get access to SharePoint Online on behalf of the user that I provided as the authenticated user in the client application, which is exactly what we wanted to do because we wanted to have in our tenant C the capability to consume a consumer application defined in tenant B, which was based on a backend API defined in tenant A. And of course, we had to register all of the uh, API app uh, instances and registrations in all of the uh, tenants involved in the architecture and in the topology of our solution. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.